Hello everybody and welcome back to another Blender Game Engine tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how you can make these uh, physical chains, these chains, and this also works for rope physics. Um, so here you can see this demo running behind me. We have this kind of wall of chains that are hanging down, and then there's some spears that are falling down a ramp, and they crash through the wall of chains. That's just so you can see that they are definitely uh, reacting to physics. So, without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so in our default Blender file here, uh, first thing we're gonna do is switch to Blender game. So then we're going to make our actual chain object. Now, if you're making a rope, you're gonna make this look like a kind of cylinder or like a kind of pill shape. Um, and if you're making a chain, well, we're gonna make a chain shape. So to do that, we're gonna add a circle. I'm gonna lower the vertex count just because we don't really need that much. I'm just gonna stretch it out into kind of an oval shape. Enter edit mode by pressing tab, hit E to extrude, right click to cancel the movement, and then S to scale it in a little bit, and S to scale it along the X axis a little bit as well. Okay. So then we're going to select the whole thing, hit E to extrude again, and we'll just lock it to the Z axis and extrude it down a little bit. And if you really want to, uh, we can add a modifier over here for a subdivision surface to make it nice and smooth, uh, but we don't necessarily need that. So I'll, I'll go ahead and make it smooth anyway, um, and then we can hit apply on the subsurf. Okay. So that's our chain link. Um, you can always make it different if you want. And I'm gonna make this a lot smaller because that's a really big chain link. Even smaller yet. Okay. One thing we're gonna wanna do is make sure we set the origin to the geometry so that it's in the center of the object, like that. Um, and since I'm doing kind of a hanging chain, I'm gonna rotate it on the Y axis by 90 degrees so that it's hanging down. Okay, so now we get into the actual physics part. So this technique uses the rigid body joints. Uh, so to use those, we need to make sure that this is a rigid body. So instead of static, we're gonna select rigid body. Uh, collision bounds, um, this here is gonna vary based on what you want. You could use a box for very basic collision. A uh, capsule will work. You see there's a little bit of extra space around the outside. Um, the capsule probably works better for the rope, I would imagine. Um, we can use a cylinder, and I think that's actually the one we will use, because the cylinder looks like it captures the shape pretty well. So we're also going to want to change any of the physical attributes we want about it. Uh, so, for instance, our mass, I'll put it up a little bit. So let's say that this is like a heavy steel chain link instead of like a light plastic chain. Um, and you can also turn up the damping just a little bit. I'm also going to add a material um, and call it chain. And the reason I'm adding the material now is because we're basically just gonna duplicate this link a bunch. And if we don't get the material on now, it's gonna be a real pain. Uh, to get it on later. Okay, so now let's go ahead and give it a name. I'm just going to call this one uh, chain link, and then we'll use the numbers that it automatically gives us uh, after this. So then we're ready to duplicate and make our first link here. So we're going to duplicate that, and then we're just going to rotate it on the z-axis by 90 degrees, and just get it to where it's kind of hanging there like that. Okay. So then what we're going to do is on our second link, we're going to go to the constraints tab and we're going to add a rigid body joint. So our target is going to be the first chain link. And instead of ball, we're going to use cone twist. You can also use a six degree of freedom joint. Uh, but cone twist works just as well. 
So we're going to want to checkmark linked collisions uh, and display pivot. So you can see here the pivots in the center of the chain link and we don't want that because that means that this chain link would just like spin around. It wouldn't swing back and forth from up here like it should. Uh, so we need to set this pivot up here and we want it so that it's pretty much, uh, so that the pivot is pretty much right where the, the two links mesh together. You can see that's pretty good. That's close enough. Okay. So then we're going to want to set up our angle limits. So we have an angle X limit and you can see that the, the X axis is here. So this is going to be how much spin back and forth uh, the link has or how much freedom it has to twist this way. So on this, let's say, let's say 20 degrees, maybe, uh, what is 20 degrees? What does 20 degrees look like? So right about there is 20 degrees. We could go a little further. We could probably go up to about, I'd say let's do 30. So we'll do 30 degrees on the X axis. The Y axis is going to be how much swing back and forth it has. Um, so let's do it this way. Let's go ahead and enter edit mode, unmark the X-ray there so that we can see through the object. And we'll just select some vertices up here around where that pivot's going to be. And that looks pretty good. And we'll hit shift S and cursor to selected. And then down here, we'll select the pivot center to be a 3D cursor. So now then, if I rotate along the y-axis, I can see that I want the limit on the y-axis to probably be uh, about 45 or so. will give us a good amount of movement. So let's go ahead and do that. Oh, actually, you can see... This is actually the z-axis. So you see this is the pivot z and this is the pivot y. So on the angle for z, we want that to be 45. And for the y, so we'll rotate it this way now, we can go, well, we can pretty much go all the way around, but let's go ahead and limit it to like a hundred and let's say 130 and you can change this to however you want it to be um, it doesn't really matter um, so this first link here what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to lock all of its translations so it doesn't move anywhere and we can lock all of the rotation if we want. I'm not going to, um, but you could if you wanted this first link to be like completely solid. Maybe this first link is actually like bolted to the ceiling or something. Um, but yeah, so now all we have to do is select this second link, duplicate it, drag it down, and then RZ90. And we can just kind of slightly adjust this and we can actually switch away from the 3D cursor mode now. Okay. Shift D to duplicate, drag it straight down. RZ 90 to rotate it 90 degrees. And you can see we're starting to get, we're starting to get a chain here. And let me do one more. So shift D, drag it down, RZ 90. And so now there's, there's a bit of an issue. So you notice if we go to the constraints tab, you'll see this one's also linked to chain link. And so is this one. Well, that's not gonna work. They have to point to the previous object in the chain. So this third link needs to point to chain link 001. This next link needs to point to 002. And this last one needs to point to 003. 
So now we can take this whole section of chains and we can duplicate that whole section if we want. Drag it down to the end. And then we only need to change this one constraint on the top of that section. So you can see this is chain link one. And the one above it is chain link 004. So we'll just tell it to do that. And all of these other constraints have automatically set themselves to the right object. Okay. So now if we play the game, you'll see it kind of freaks out there right at the very beginning. Um, I'm not 100% sure why that is. But now you see we've got a nice kind of chain there. And just to show that it does react to physics, let me add a cube here. And I will add some quick logic to it. Keyboard, spacebar, and, and we will just tell him to move on the X axis a little bit. And I'm just gonna make sure to make his collision bounds a box. So there we see we're in the game, we have the chain, and if I move forward, the whole chain reacts. Which I think works really nicely. And again, if we want this top link, we can completely lock it. Um, or we could even have a physics constraint on him to another object above him. Okay, so there's really no difference between this and a rope as far as the physics goes. It's really just a different mesh on it. So if I do a control L and I link the object data. So now if I edit one, I'm editing the mesh of um, all of them. If I were to select the whole thing, I'm going to put the cursor in the center. I'm just going to delete all of the vertices. So now you see we've got a whole bunch of chain links that aren't there. If I add a cylinder, and I'm going to take the vertice count down to 12. Um, if I add a cylinder, now you can see I can scale it down to about the diameter I want the rope to be. Scale it a little bit lengthwise. And then if I select the ends, one of the ends, I can extrude it and scale it down a little bit. And then extrude it again and scale it down a little bit more. That'll give me kind of a pill shape. And I'm going to do the exact same thing on the other side. And the reason I do this kind of pill shape is so that whenever a link rotates, it isn't, um, it, it's not as easily, it's not as easy to tell from the player's perspective that it's just a bunch of objects that actually looks a lot more like a rope. Um, so the only difference between the chain and these ropes is we want this we want these pivots to be right where the two objects cross over um, and it just so happens that they already are on here but that's just something to keep in mind um, it looks like we'll also want a slightly different physics type um, convex hull should work so let's just do that. We can just set the bottom one to be convex hull. Shift select all of the other ones. Selecting the bottom one last. Object, uh, game, copy physics properties. So now all of these have the convex hull. So now if I play the game, oh, this guy wasn't locking anymore for some reason. Oh, cause I uh, copied the physics type. So now you see, if we play the game, we get this nice rope, and we can hit spacebar, and we can kind of fly through the rope. And obviously you can make it look a little bit better than that, um, but I'm not going to go into too much detail with this. So you could like, just make this capsule a little longer maybe, maybe that makes it work better. 
Um, yeah, so you could fine tune it to make it a look look a lot better. Um, this kind of technique is a lot better at a distance um, than it is up close. Whenever you get really up close to these ropes, they don't look quite as good. So that's going to do it for today. I hope that you found something in this tutorial useful. I hope this has helped you. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section down below and I will try to respond to you. Um, and yeah, I want to thank you guys all very much for watching and enjoy the rest of your day.